Uh, today on our SAP tips and tricks uh, of a coffee break, we will have uh, the integration framework B1IF Simplified, who were, uh, it will be presented by Guy Plant. So Guy, if you want to start, I'm gonna share the panelist uh, with you. Uh, Guy, I think uh, you're still in uh, on mute. Can you s stop sharing your screen? I'll stop uh, sharing my okay, good. Yes, it's done. Okay. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Guy Plant. Uh, I've been with uh, SAP since uh, 15 years. I've been working with the tool we are presenting this afternoon since uh, six years, since 2016. Uh, so we'll go with our demo. What is, S uh, what is uh, SAP Business One uh, B1IF? Uh, it's an integration tool. It's used to communicate with other systems. Like I can communicate with another SAP Business One, uh, communicate with the text file, anything like this. It's a, it's a tool that's built by SAP. So with every update of your software, when you're updating SAP Business One, there's, a, there's an option to install the application uh, on, the, on the install process. And it's up to us to apply it or not. Uh, most of the time on new installation, we, ins we, uh, we install it. Uh, on the install, it takes about uh, 15 minutes more to install uh, the old package when we include the uh, V1IF. And then after that, it takes about an hour to configure, co configure it properly, which is basically uh, making sure it's connecting to all database that we want to work with. And after that is done, it's ready to process. It's ready to run. It's a development tool. It replaces uh, some uh, SDK, uh, which I call simple SDK, uh, simple development, uh, like um, it's transaction between systems. So it's, it's really, it really replaces all kind of, of code that, that we can we can use this. So the big advantage of this is uh, at the office we're about seven or eight using the tool, and out of those seven eight, there's there's five consultant, which didn't have a, a programming background at the beginning, but they learn uh, B1IF and the language uh, used uh, in that tool is quite simple to learn uh, and it makes you do great things. So it's a development tool, but it can be handled by someone who wants to learn it. Um, it's, 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 it's a learning curve, but it's feasible. Uh, most of the time, what we do at our customer, we uh, we do the development. If there's there's one guy interested in learning the tool, we, we teach them how it works. And uh, after that, uh, some of them, they're able to do their own stuff. There's, there's basically, the customer that using, with, with programmer that using B1IF for practically all the transactions they're doing. The tool is working in uh, SAP ANA and SQL. So it's available for both uh, database uh, system that SAP is supporting. It's uh, very transparent. Uh, if a customer decide to move from SQL to ANA, it's uh, the only difference is that the, if you ever we use ANA, SQ, ANA SQL uh, queries in our, in our system, we need to make sure it runs in ANA. We need to convert the, uh, the SQL to be in the ANA structure of an SQL. That's the only thing to do. The rest is uh, very, it, it's, it's a very 
uh, easy. It, it's fluid. It, it, it's from we we went uh, when we when we upgrade the version. When we, let, let's say the last in the last three months, we did two upgrade uh, with the big big B1 IF uh, systems, and we went from 9.3 to 10.0, and practically there was nothing to do uh, on with the B1 IF. Uh, code that we have done it it work uh, as uh, as in the earlier version as the tool is handled by sap business one the tool itself uh, the only thing we're responsible of is the programming we're doing all the rest all the connector all the uh, the connection to the database it's all handled by the tool that sap provides so this is uh, this is this is nice that sap does that because it's uh, more it's it's strong as a, an architecture it comes in uh, two version it comes in uh, version one which is a version running since uh, 2008 2009 when the first when b1 if was introduced and there's a version two it's uh, which been launched uh, two years ago to 20, 2019 which is more for a multiple instance, instance company like a um, cloud-based company. Uh, basically, cloud, cloud-based company when you have more than one company running on the same server, running with different uh, uh, B1IF scenarios. So that's uh, what we use and two. Currently, uh, we have about... Uh, on, on, in our customer base, we have about... 35 customer using uh, B1IF. As a rule, since uh, the beginning of the year, all new uh, development must be done in two. So we do the, the new one in two. So there's about five or six in two. The 29 others, 30, 25, 29, 30 others, they are done in, uh, in one. And uh, there's a migration tool that comes with the uh, B1IF that allows us to migrate from one to two and all other customer eventually will be migrate from the version two. Uh, SAP plan to uh, stop the support for version 1.0 in 2026, January 2026. So it's still good for four or five years. So we have a little time to do that uh, before it's, uh, it's not supported anymore. So that's what the B1IF does. It's, it's a development tool. It's for integrating with other system. Here's some possibilities. Uh, here, here, what, what, with what we can interface, what tool we can interface. Uh, first time we uh, we went to uh, training for B1IF. The main reason we went there it's because we had a lot of requests by customer that they wanted push flat file into SAP Business One. Uh, all the time, it was requiring a development to a developer to look at it and then uh, do a quotation. And then we're going to give you a, an Excel sheet and you're going to bring it in sales order. You're going to make it in invoice. Uh, so it was very tedious for a very easy task to do, which is read the CLV file and create a sales order in SAP. So that's why us consultant, we went to that training just to learn to do that. And that's what we start with. We started with the flat file, and then we create documents in SAP. So that's one way that SAP integrate with the outside world, flat file. So it deposes, if, if you have a CSV file, a text file, an XML file, at one customer, we have PRN file, we can read them. And we wrote those data, we bring them in SAP, and we create whatever document we need to create. Then, then we start working on it, and then we, 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 we figure out that we can do more stuff. So one thing we could do, we can do transaction between companies, uh, with, between two SAP Business One companies. Uh, a customer who want to have a, um, like, like a small interco transaction. They, they have one, one purchase order created in one company, they want one sales order in the other one. And when the sales order is delivered, they want to do the good receipt in the new company, in the first company, in the company A. So this, this was done with uh, B1IF. There's about 
that I know of, there's about four or five customers that have a little uh, interco like this. It's not like the big interco from SAP, but at the end, it does the same thing. It creates the document uh, in the, uh, does the same thing. It, it, does a, <laughs> it does part of what the big SAP interco does. It, it, it's, it's creating documents between uh, two, uh, two database. We can also interface with the big, big, big SRP, the big, the big one, uh, which was known as R3 before. I think it's now called E6, uh, something like this. So there, there's possibility to interface with that. Uh, that we don't have any in our in our in our customers yet. Uh, databases. Let's say the customer has a couple of. I have a customer that has uh, five companies, and. Uh, uh, three of the company before they, they, they move on to SAP, they, they worked on different system with different database. So we could interface with those database to get the data from there and, and merge them and read those data and bring some information in SAP from those, from those, those, those other database. Uh, like I mentioned on the first uh, slide, it's a uh, database can be SQL, can be uh, ANA database. We have a, uh, Access database. We can we we, we work with uh, Oracle is available. So it's it's all it's just a matter of getting the connection. And as soon as we connect, we're able to read the tables from the database and do whatever we want with the data in there. Whatever we want, it's uh, it's a bit dangerous, but what, what needs to be done. Uh, the last one is the HTTP call. Um, this this really to go uh, the, the main the, the main reason is to use the API uh, the service uh, the web service that are available uh, but we can do that to get and uh, get the data like uh, the SAP provide once one scenarios of B1IF which is to uh, get the uh, daily exchange rate. Uh, Every day, and it's 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 running with uh, an HTTP call. Uh, it called they call the central bank, and then they get the rate, and then they update the rate table in SAP. So when you do your transaction for different currencies, the the exchange rate is is there. So this this come when uh, this, this is available when you install the B1IF. It's one scenario that you need to activate, and it does the job. So that's the possibilities that uh, that we can we can interface with. Uh, we can interface with the machine, like uh, the, if the database, they, they have a machine, we can interface with machine. If the machine can, pro can, can create a text file, we can load those text files from this machine and create transaction. Like, like I have one customer who does grading, it, it grades, it grades a, a finished product, uh, which size is this, which size, and then you got to, to make them in the, to put in the, the right section. So we, we read the grading uh, uh, from a, text file coming from his uh, production machine. Uh, so that's kind of stuff we have. The next slide, it's other example I'm gonna give you, the entire company we talked about uh, earlier. Uh, we have we have customer that need, and they have, they have two companies, they have a Canadian company, they have a US company. Uh, the stock is in the US, they wanna move it to Canada. So we, we, we create the transaction between the companies we sometimes we synchronize the item master data to make sure that the item in one side is the same. Uh, so that that's all thing that can be, be done between SAP and SAP between two SAP database, SAP B1 database. We also have the uh, uh, flat file. Another use we have that there's there's customer that receive massive uh, uh, payment from their customer. And when you go into an uh, incoming payment in SAP, sometime uh, processing a 500 line uh, payment might be uh, might take half a day manually or more. Uh, we uh, we create a little tools that can read the uh, the file that was sent by your customer and uh, create the payment. So it 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 you get it basically it it reads you you need to change a little bit the, the format that your customers send you the information to put it in a standard format. 
and then uh, you send it to B1IF and it does the payment. Uh, two years ago, we processed a payment of 12,000 12, lines uh, with the uh, incoming payment. It took about uh, 20 minutes processing, uh, which was after taking uh, about I don't know how many days to do it manually in SAP. One example of the HTTP calls that comes, comes very often by a customer, it's the at shipping time, they, they want to get the, the shipping cost and they want to add it to the invoice. So this, most of the time, the, uh, the carriers provide us an API that we can call. And we do the call, we know what are we shipping and which address are we shipping to. And then we send that to the, uh, sh the carrier it, and then it gives back uh, what the cost will be and it, it, it send back the, the labels as well. So this is an example of HTTP calls. Uh, we, uh, we did some, we integrated about three uh, supplier, but we integrated two uh, rate shopper and one, one carrier uh, so far with uh, uh, B1IF. Uh, depending on what the customer want, uh, there's one customer on his, on his warehouse is, is, is preparing the delivery. When the delivery is create, we do the call, we get the, uh, we get the cost back, then we create the invoice. We print the invoice, we print the label, everything is put in the box and it's sent to the customer. So it's done with B1IF. And uh, yesterday uh, I, I did a study on time, how, how, long, it, how long it took uh, to do all this, uh, the time the uh, delivery is done and uh, getting the answer back with all the ticket printed and the invoice created. It took uh, on the five boxes, shipment it took 32 seconds so it's quite uh, interesting the http calls and and the cost is the cost that given by your uh, carrier the other the other thing that we do is uh, we do some production process <laughs> we have a customer that uh, either produce or sell their product they have it in stock or they produce it uh, they assemble it. So on, on some of them, uh, we, uh, at, at the time the sales order is entered, we, if the finished product need to the product produce, we uh, just create a sales or uh, a production order in the system. Then we do that. We create a production order. We create the inventory transfer, and everything is is in SAP. And then the user only need to transfer the stock into production. The production is linked to the end to the sales order. And when the document, the production is done, then we're ready to ship the goods. So this is done with the internal transaction with within the same SAP. So it's a process, but we we can do that with the B1IF as well. So these are these are example of the, the demand that customer ask us and that we fulfill by using that tool. Um, there's more example, uh, but this is our, these are these are very frequent one. Uh, the, the freight charge is coming more and more frequent. Uh, customer really want to have the the real freight charge at shipping time, and that that is very interesting to have that in SAP. So now that is done, uh, th this is part is done. I will uh, show you uh, what is, uh, B1IF looks like. We'll show you the windows. It's it's a web base. Uh, it's, it's installed on the server where SAP is installed uh, by default. If we have big volume of transaction, SAP recommend to have a specific uh, server to install this because it does a lot of transaction. So it's a web, it's a web program. It's that this is the cockpit of all what's running and what's you can see my, my cockpit is green. So it's uh, everything goes well, but I don't have much transaction running. So this is, this is really what you need to look at uh, once the development is done. That's the only screen you need, need to look at basically. 
the rest is the, the other windows that we have tabs is basically for the development team. When, when, when the scenario are developed, that's what they're using. Uh, so that's, that's, that's the, how, how it looks. It's installed on the server. It can be it can be it can be uh, accessed by uh, within SAP. There's a menu. There's a menu option in SAP when you can call a B1IF uh, application, and then that, that's the window that's being used. So now to finish, I'm going to show. I'm going to do a little transaction. This is a XML file uh, to create a sales order draft. In, uh, it's going to create a sales order draft in SAP Business One. So the, the process is very simple. Uh, you, the customer give you this XML file, which a given format, uh, as long as the format is the same every time he send it to you, you just need to bring it in a specific folder. And once it's there, uh, B1IF, uh, looks at that file and every uh, five seconds is, is reading and it's bringing that file. So when that file disappears, that means that B1IF read it and it's doing whatever we want it to do. So in our example, it should be done by now. It should have created a AR draft document. If I go in my sales report, document draft document, I select the document created today. I should have one by now, 792. This is the one I just created. And that's what was created. If I look at the uh, change log on this, uh, no, it's, it's a draft document. Okay, I'll, I'll add it. I, I, need, I need to enter a date, a shipping date. Then I need to add my document. I created the draft document because I, I elected to select to, to, to create a draft document, but I could have created a real document right away. Uh, usually when we do a sales order, if we create real document, we create them as unapproved so a customer can approve it before they go into a really release for production. So uh, that's that was created by B1IF. And if I go back in my B1IF, I should I should go in my monitor message. I should have one example, one uh, success message uh, as of this afternoon. Uh, see, I got one message here, 1354, it's my time. So that, that's when it was processed. So the tool keeps a log of all transactions. Uh, if there's, a, there's an error handling routine on, on, in, in, on, on that system. So if the transaction fail, uh, uh, email can be sent at the per, uh, the person in charge of the process. Let's say if it's in if it's in the sales order, it will go to the uh, order desk. Let's say uh, that sales order was in error because uh, one item that the customer order is inactive in our system. Example, then you will get the error message. Uh, this is all within the, 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 that that tool that we can handle this. So that's. Uh, that's in a quick uh, view of what uh, B1IF is, uh, can do. Uh, if you have any question, uh, I'll be answering them. Okay, uh, Cynthia. Yes, okay, so there's no question. So thank you, Guy, thank for you. your presentation. Very good. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, bye.